Hello and welcome to another Taking It to the Streets edition of the Adrian Ross Show, the second Taking It to the Streets. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you the conversations I had with individuals at Southeast Missouri State University again. I went back to SEMO. I spoke with eight people, four people individually, and then two sets of two. And you know, I encountered some things I had not expected. I didn't expect an immigrant theme, for example, but I spoke with one immigrant and I spoke with someone who was first generation American. It didn't plan that. That was interesting. And I also got to speak with a young man who took me in a completely different direction. That's my last conversation. And I'll come back and talk to you about that before I show you that conversation with him. I really am enjoying being able to be out with people and talk to them. So I hope that you got a chance to see the first edition of Taking It to the Streets. If not, make sure you go back and check that out. But I'm also really excited about bringing more of this to you and uh, and no better place to, to pick up than right now with these conversations I just had. So enjoy Taking It to the Streets. So here we go. I'm assuming you think of college as a way to have a bright future? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you think about this country where we live, is there anything that you're particularly concerned about or particularly optimistic about in terms of? Homelessness. Homelessness. Homelessness, do you feel like that's an issue? That's definitely an issue. Okay. Like, why they gotta be homeless then? Then they just try to ban them. Like, how do you ban somebody from being homeless? Mm. You can't even do that. That's not even possible. How are you going to take somebody to jail because they can't afford to have a house or somewhere to stay? And then we got a campus right here. Who made this? So we got money. Y'all can make hotels for homeless people. Okay. They do it. They do it already, but like they only get a certain amount of time. Like they can make homeless. They can make hotels for like people like say like you give them a month, give a homeless person a month in a hotel to get themselves together. If they don't get themselves together, they can't come back or however that may be. But they how, like how they gonna, can do stuff. Like what does get yourself together look like? Like help them, like help them like get a hotel, help them get a job, give them the resources they need to get that job. Mm -hmm. They probably they need to take shower, of course. They need clothes for that job. So help them do them. And who's things. who's gonna provide that? The government. Ah, so you think it's the government's role? I ain't like everybody. Not necessarily. Yeah, not necessarily, but, they but can like help. They if they help. gonna ban them, like they should at least help. Okay. So in other words, the taxpayers, because yeah. we are the government, <laughs> right? Okay. All right. But well, I appreciate that. All right. Thank you. Just want to ask you. You're obviously you're a freshman. Yes, correct. You're in college, so you're obviously looking ahead to your future. When you think about your future in this country, mm -hmm. um, or when you think about the country in general, what is it that you are? either concerned about for the country or particularly optimistic about um so with my like uncertainties that make my whole life i just don't like the unknown i say like everything can change so fast or so slow mm -hmm. that we just don't know what could what tomorrow could bring mm -hmm. it's like tomorrow the sun could fall out of the sky or it could happen in three four million years just, i just don't like not knowing what what's going to happen mm -hmm. so i don't really have like a necessarily idea it's just i don't know what could happen mm -hmm. Are you particularly optimistic about anything? Um, I do say, I, like, from this, this country and this world being in war and stuff in the past and it being just comes out and out of bad things, I'd have to say, it, to me, it's gotten better, at least in my perspective, just every people are becoming more nicer, the environments. It's just, I think, I feel like it's just, everything's becoming better, okay. I feel like, to me. Uh, well, thank you so much You're for welcome. your perspective. All right, so for the record, this young man does not go to school here, but he's waiting for his girlfriend who does. But I'm, I'm going to ask him some questions anyway for the Adrian Ross Show. What does it mean to you to be an American? To be an American? Yeah. Well, I came from like an immigrant home, so I'm a first generation immigrant. Uh, my whole family is Bosnian, but I grew up here. Okay. So it's like I kind of grew up with like, don't be American, but be American at the same time. So like, I just think... Anyone can be American as long as like you embody, I guess, sort of a pride for your country. 
So, so elaborate a little bit about when, when your family said, you know, don't be an American, but be an American. What, what, how do you balance that? Well, it was, like, it was just weird when I was young at school because like, you know, I kind of got treated like I was everybody else because, you know, when you go to school, but kids are also different. So like I got treated a little differently, mm -hmm. but the same by like teachers and stuff. And so like, it was just kind of like, slowly everyone else at my school specifically was also like, I had a lot of Bosnians, a lot of Hispanic people, like everyone kind of connected being different, which was nice. Um, but with that home, my mom was kind of like, I don't know, this is especially true, I think for a lot of like Bosnian immigrants, mm -hmm. they kind of like push away a lot of American like norms mm. and kind of try to like stick to themselves you know what I mean okay. so like since I grew up here I kind of feel like I am American I guess like the Bosnian mm -hmm. American is like the right term but yeah just holding to the traditions as right. well what do you think about the the immigrant have you been paying attention to all the immigrants coming over not now? like super recently but yeah. like whenever that whole like Syria action was going on and like when you like there's literal footage of immigrants coming over like on foot and just getting like denied i don't know that's the whole like it's a big thing you know what i mean it's like i can understand why people wouldn't want immigrants in their country but i can also see how it could be so much better managed you know mm. what i mean with like letting immigrants in seeing who's more fit and who's not more fit to be there and where you should take them and what's the next step you know from there well thank you thank you all right what do you think when you hear about being an american what comes to your mind um. <laughs> like what's I'm the not, first thing that comes I'm, to people's mind when they say america i mean the, they're blessed like it's it's now, are you from America? I'm not. Okay, where are so, you from? Yeah, I'm from Zimbabwe. I'm not from oh, here. I've, yeah. I've visited, I've not been in Zimbabwe, but I've, I've looked at it. I've been in Zambia, visited Zambia. Oh, that's nice. And, We're neighbors. Yeah. yeah, I know. And you're from there as well? No. Okay. She's American. You're from right. here. Okay, but you said blessed. Why do you say blessed? Um, Because, like, America is a land of opportunities, and I think people can explore as much as they can here, like, you know. Mm -hmm. And you said you're a junior? Mm -hmm. Do you agree with her? Because you're you're born and raised here, right? <laughs> Do you think of being blessed when you think of America? I was the first thing that came to my mind was like patriotic and just like patriotism. Do you consider yourself a patriotic person? No. No. Why do you think that is? Are you unpatriotic or you just never thought about it? I just never thought about it. Okay. Well, you might want to talk to her because she says you're blessed. <laughs> <laughs> when people are born here, what? Like they don't really have like and know how of like other parts of the world mm -hmm. they don't know what's going on in in those parts of the world so like sometimes they don't i mean they don't really know what's going on there but when we come here we like see it as a land of like opportunities and growth and and you've been here how long three years, three years. and like if you've seen like most immigrants we really we are so ambitious when we come here and we really want to you know mm -hmm. so, let me ask you this it. So when you got here, is it what you expected or have we let you down? I mean, it is what I expected, but like there's some things that I also like did not know of mm -hmm. that I was shocked to see. It's not really the way it's perceived, like all of it. There are some parts that you, you know, that are not perceived in the media that, that are shocking when you come here. <laughs> I don't want to go into detail. One example. Things. Come on, you gotta give me one. Ah just just different yeah. than what you expected. Yeah, so. but the media perceives America like differently. Yeah. Yeah, how does the media perceive show us? I mean it shows the good things only, like uh, the very good things, like good buildings, everything is just perfect and seems functional and good, but like, you know, there are other things as well, so well, yeah. that's the media for you, right? <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, I won't keep you ladies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when you think about being an American, what comes to your mind? I think of having freedom to live life as I want. Mm -hmm. And 
Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Now, when you hear like people use terms like American exceptionalism, you buy that, you don't buy that. Um, I don't think I've ever heard the term. Do you think American America is uh, an exceptional nation, contrast to other nations? I definitely do. I feel like really everyone is represented here in America. Whereas other nations, you would really just see one type of race or ethnicity and or even some places that have a really strict way to live. So you see that diversity as a good thing? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Now I just want to jump in here because this last conversation was one that I had not anticipated. I didn't even I didn't even bother to ask him what I intended to ask him because the way he started the conversation, I just had to go with it. So powerful. And I'm not going to say any more. I'm just going to take you to it. So uh, check out what this young man had to say. In fall of 2020, I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I suffered from a severe pornography addiction for about 10 years of my life. And he showed me my sin and absolutely changed my life and um, so I originally came down to SEMO with the intention of pursuing a criminal justice degree mm -hmm. uh, to be part of the DEA mm -hmm. um, but once I got saved I didn't want to live my life tied down to the government I wanted to have a family uh, and I guess you could say live a little more simpler life if you want to put it that way I don't I don't consider it that but yeah um, so I changed my major to criminology and then to business administration mm -hmm. and then finally to corporate communication and uh, once I realized I wasn't good at math I I switched to corporate communication but I had enough credits to have a business minor so wow. um, so the perfect job that I would say would be uh, full-time ministry for the Lord mm -hmm. um, and I don't know exactly what that would bring uh, not in expecting a salary or anything like that, but just to be able to serve the Lord and provide for my family at the same time. That would be the dream job of my life. And, um, and I think I'm a part of the greatest work, the Great Commission right now. And it's a privilege to be able to share the message with others. And it's the, wow. the, the life let me, that... Let me, let me tell you what, what a dream is. I just happened upon you. This talking to you is a dream. I'm a Christian as well. Praise the and, Lord. Uh, yeah. And so... This is um, really encouraging, especially on a college campus where, yeah. you know, how do you, um, we're just going to go in a whole different direction because sure. I'm going to flow with you. Um, of but how, um, how difficult or not difficult is it to walk with the Lord in today's culture and even in, you know, in, on a college campus? Well, <clears throat> I think being in the self-absorbed culture that we're in right now, mm -hmm. Uh, I think there's definitely a lot of, of dangers constantly, right? You think of advertising and you think of all types of things that uh, are very enticing, you know, pulling your life away by professionalism or uh, even just not good pursuits. Uh, it definitely shows you the reality that sin is in the world, mm -hmm. as the scripture says. Um, but it also helps me cling closer to the Lord Jesus and knowing that, you know, he paid the debt of my sin on the cross, knowing that he did that work for me, the Bible says he actually is living in me and he's with me here today. So it's an encouraging thing when I see all the sin around me, uh, it just makes the cross much more real to me when I realize that Jesus was willing to come to a place like this mm -hmm. and he was willing to be afflicted and, and spat on and beaten for us. Yeah. It just encourages me knowing that that's what the Lord Jesus was willing to go through in order yeah. to provide a way that I could have everlasting life through faith in That's him. That's beautiful. So, what year are you? I'm a senior here. How did you come to the Lord? So uh, I was in my dorm, and like I said, I suffered from a severe pornography addiction for mm -hmm. about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was in my dorm, and there was a question that came uh, in my mind, and it, I believe it was the Spirit of God that put it there. Mm -hmm. But a question came upon my mind, and it said, it was, what does God think of me? Mm. And I never thought about that before. I always thought about myself and, you know, how, you know, how I please God, but I never thought about what he thought of me. And immediately, it was almost like immediate, uh, the pleasure that I was having in the, the screen that I was looking at, it just went away. And it, it went from pleasure to bondage. And I, I think I got a sense of the holiness of the Lord and how seriously he takes sin. 
and I dropped to my knees in my dorm and I gave my life to the Lord Jesus and I said Lord just help me deliver me I didn't know all the lingo I didn't know mm -hmm. the Bible at all and I really studied it but uh, I just said Lord help me and deliver me from this and it was not a not a with no time whatsoever I just had a completely changed life and he changed the direction of my life uh, just the the sinful ways that I, I walked in in just 180 like dominoes this one thing after another uh, I got convicted of by the Spirit of God and he just changed my life and he gave me a passion for uh, the loss and I, I see myself uh, when I consider others that are uh, eternal souls that are going to be in either hell or heaven a billion years from now so uh, just I want to fulfill the Great Commission that he's given us and I want to preach the gospel in every creature so wow that's that's my purpose now and I think it's a it's a high it's a high calling oh yeah yes it is the highest and um, wow if I don't talk to another person today this is a, this is a blessing and encouragement and and knowing that you are bold and that I believe God's going to use you so don't look back praise the Lord All well, right. Thank you again for the little my, time. I appreciate my it. My pleasure. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm done. I, I wasn't going to be done this fast, but that young man, he just blew me away and uh, really, really appreciated him. And uh, he actually, before we parted, he actually prayed for me, asked if he could pray for me about something, prayed for me. And, and then I prayed for him, but believing for great things for him. But yeah, that, that, that I'm about, I'm about done now. That was, that was something. Love to see that on this college campus. So yeah, so uh, there you have it for this edition of Taking It to the Streets. So that's it for the second edition of the Adrian Ross Show's Taking It to the Streets. There's nothing like getting out with people, not with an agenda, not trying to corner them, not trying to embarrass them, not trying to prop them up, even just wanting to hear from them. And, uh, and so... Let's just do more of it. Let's do more talking and let's do more listening. Or maybe I should say let's do less talking and more listening. However you want to look at it, I appreciate the conversation. So thank you for tuning in and be sure to go to the BMG Network. That is the bmgnetwork.com and check out the other podcasters there. Of course, we are engaging, enlightening, informative, and even entertaining. And I always appreciate your support on the podcast platforms, on my Substack, adrianross.substack.com, on YouTube at The Adrian Ross Show. And, uh, and let's just continue to do the work that we're doing. All right. God bless you abundantly.